This video is going to go over the proper pathing, the enemies which you will find, the boss, party compositions, and trinkets. Since this is the first Darkest Dungeon, you may not be familiar with how all the du dungeons work, but all the dungeons are not randomly produced, they are actually set, therefore we can design a path through them every time, which is very helpful in your planning, your party composition, and deciding which enemies you want to fight and which ones you do not. The path I've taken, I try to do the least amount of stress possible, which is, which is kind of a joke in the Darkest Dungeon, the first level, because certain enemies in here will do damage to stress, as you will see. I tried to pick the less stress inducing path as possible, but we will still need to control enemies and target certain ones in high priority to avoid getting an affliction status. The path is going to go as follows. Right, down, right, slash, up, right, down, right, up, right, right. Every Darkest Dungeon also, for the most part, will have a chance to get an ancestral item. This path also hits that, so don't worry, you don't have to redesign a path. I am taking you through it to get to there. So don't worry about going online, finding a map to try to re-navigate this. This takes you perfectly through. The enemies you're going to see, about half of them are new, and the other half are just their word change and an aesthetic change. You will now be fighting Ascended Witches and Brawlers. They pretty much function as the same, so you have your Witches who do the push, pull, and stress, and your Brawlers who are looking to function off of marks, and also do a lot of bleed damage. But the real ones I want to talk about are the guys in the black robes, or creatures, more like it, and they, they are the cultist priests. And just to go over cultist priests, they are an eldritch slash beast, which we will talk about. They get one action, their HP is fairly high, almost sitting at 40 at 38, and their resistances are all fairly low besides their bleed resistance. Stun's pretty high at 73, but it's still about a 70% chance with 140% base chance. Going back to the enemy's class, they are Eldritch and Beast, which means Occultists and Houndmasters obviously have an inherent skill advantage against them, but obviously any Slayer rings and quirks will help this as well, but we'll save that for composition and trinkets later. Their HP is fairly high, and since they're only really susceptible to Blight, you may want to do more raw damage to them, rather than depending on DOT, and also the quicker you can finish these enemies or at least keep them sunlocked, the better. We're going to go over their two abilities, you're going to see why potentially stopping them quickly in terms of killing them rather than DOT is much more preferable, rather than waiting for them to tick out. We'll go over their weaker ability first, but it's still pretty strong, is Death Lash. It's going to hit position 1 and 2 on your side, so it's a combo move, but only does 4-7 to seven damage and it adds 5 stress, which isn't huge, but the main point of it really is to decrease your bleed resistance. If you have someone who can repose, which we will once again talk about in the party composition, such as a highwayman or man at arms, essentially they don't do a lot of damage and you can whack them back, which is really good. It's something I definitely recommend against the cultist priest in the first level. The real ability we're looking at here, and the one we kind of want to kill them off straight away for, is the finger. The finger can be used in any row and hit any target, which means no one's safe, and does have a high accuracy of almost 114 according to the Wikipedia, with a almost 20% crit chance at 17. Its damage is also 7 to 14, but really it's the effect targets we're looking at. It's 15 stress, which is 5 short of a stressful incantation from a witch, which you can see why we'd want to kill them and it's a 150% chance to do 6 bleed for 3 turns. Cultist priests are no joke and they need to be stun controlled or just immediately decimated right away before they get a lot of actions, however with a speed of 7 they are pretty good at getting to go in the middle of the pack, so you may want to put on high speed just to outspeed them. The other significant enemy you're really going to face more often than just one time is the Raptors cultists. We'll go through, they're unholy and they're human. So, Bounty Hunters and Crusaders are obviously good. I really wouldn't focus too much on getting damage increase trinkets or people against these guys, because they have an HP of 21, which is very weak, zero dodge, and all the resistances are terrible, sitting well below 50% on all of them. Therefore, you might be thinking, why the heck are they in here if they're that weak? Do they do a lot of damage? No, they're more like meat shields, because they will literally guard people, but once again, not gain protection, so you don't even need protection piercing abilities. And also, the really main thing you probably don't want them doing is flesh to flesh. What that does, it heals for 6 or 12, so you figure someone gets like critical at 10, they get 20 of their HP back. I can really allow someone to survive another round or two if you're depending on DOT damage. That's why I recommend just raw damage, because you do have people who are going to heal, and also these people hit very hard in the terms of stress and physical damage, so you're going to be repairing a lot, and the more turns they get to go, it's not great. So stuns and raw damage are highly preferred in the first level of the Darkest Dungeon. 
And just some quick theories, some people love to leave the rapturous cultists first, and some people like to kill the priests first. I prefer to take out the cultists, at least one of them, there's two of them, if there's just one I like to take out the one. You never know who they're gonna guard first, and also you don't know when they're gonna heal. If you get unfortunate and get like a dodge and then they get a crit heal, they can really backpedal you a couple of turns in terms of your damage you take and also the amount of stress damage you can take. However, with that said, if I have an opportunity just to blast away a cultist priest immediately, I definitely will. The Rapture's cultists are just more weird supports and they actually cannot harm you as you heard from the abilities earlier. So if you leave two of them alive and just one other enemy, they don't really do much other than guard each other and heal each other. So just take out the big damage dealer first if you can. If not, take care of these guys appropriately either through multi-stuns or just through just finish them with damage right away and then focus your stuns on the cultist priest if you want because these guys have a stun resistance of 50% compared to the 73 of the cultist priest, so take your options, it's about 20% difference, 25, therefore you'll have a much better chance to stun these guys and then full damage onto the cultist priest. Of course, no dungeon would be complete without a boss. Before we get to the shuffling horror, the name is exactly as it intends to do, it's going to shuffle your party the whole time, so you're going to need a composition that's very capable, at moving the whole time and attacking from really any row. And that factor is what makes this dungeon very difficult because you can plan for the regular dungeon very well, but then you get to the boss and you begin to realize your party has deficiencies against getting shuffled. Just to go over the class it is, it is Eldritch once again, which means obviously any slayers, quirks, or occultists will work very well against this, or anything else you can do that obviously pumps up Eldritch slaying abilities. It has only a small HP of 160, so it doesn't actually take a long time to get through. Now it does have a protection of 33%, so if you're not going to take any protection lowering abilities, such as an occultist, or uh, piercing abilities such as the Grave Wrapper or Shield Breaker, you're going to look more towards probably about 210 or something. You are going to add about an additional 50 HP onto that. The Shuffler's resistances are pretty decent actually, the lowest one being bleed, which means you can take advantage of the DOT turns if you want. However, the big one sitting at 150% practically is a stun resistance, so you are going to expect this creature to go pretty much every turn. And that's okay, because some of the strategies we're going to come up, we actually want it to, so we can uh, pretty much, I'm going to say it now, we can repost this. We don't want to necessarily stun it, because its abilities actually don't hit that hard, and we want it to attack us so we can repost, thus killing it much quicker than we would if it just sat there. The abilities of the Shuffling Har, I'm, I'm going to talk about two in specific, the one I'm just going to mention real quick here. There's going to be a Cultist Priest in the back of this fight, do not focus it, because it has an ability called Echoing Disassembly, and all that's going to do is resummon that in either a Cultist Priest or Defensive Growth. I didn't talk about Defensive Growth too much because you fight them only once, however in a t fight like this you're definitely going to want the Priest because the Defensive Growth has abilities that obviously allows other forms of defense and buffing up people, so you don't want that one to be summoned. The Cultist Priest starts and you pretty much want to keep him there until the boss is dead and then kill him. It's really the other two abilities we're really going to want to focus on, Lacerate and Undulations. Lacerate is exactly how it sounds, it's just going to hit a couple of your people for about 5-10 to 10 damage, pretty low crit chance at 5%, and it's just going to do bleed. Once again, if we get repost individuals in here, we can only hope it's going to lacerate on that individual. It may not, but you hope it does. And then you get to the ability Undulations, and this is the one where it's 140% chance to shuffle the party. So this is the ability that can essentially ruin your lineup if you don't know it and you get in here and the next thing you know, this is your first time through, you brought in like really bad row versatility, you spend more turns trying to get to the front than you do actually hitting into it. So now that we know it's going to shuffle the party, we can begin to bring in very row diverse people such as possibly a bounty hunter I use. I used a crusader for holy lance. You can use a highwayman, grave robber, shield breaker, hellion. I mean there's a lot of good individuals that can do this. Individuals we may want to avoid are lepers and arbalists. They're very row dependent on the back or the front and we don't necessarily want that. And the reason why we can actually repose this ability is it does one damage. Therefore, we can definitely repost this, and it's only one damage as well, the 0% crit modifier, so really it's just asking to get smacked by at least one repost. If you want to double down, go two Highwaymen. I think it would be perfect you to get two reposts in there and two duelers advanced in there, and you could really chip this boss away very quickly. Other than that, there's not too many strategies. Lower the protection if you have just raw damage, or if you do have a big bleed damage individual in the party, such as possibly a Fledgelant or a Hellion, they can certainly do some decent damage, and then also take it out with bleed DOT. 
Now I'm going to go over party compositions and trinkets slash quirks you can take into here for maximum effectiveness. The party I took in the video here is obviously a bounty hunter, crusader, highwayman, and occultist. I think the occultist isn't a bad pick, but I, I decided initially to bring it in for more of a pool. I think I should have taken it in for a sacrificial stab, get the highwayman and the crusader in the front, and then played around with the fourth position. Possibly a Houndmaster, maybe a Man at Arms for self -busting, buffing, maybe even a Jester just to give me some battle ballots, more speed and stuff like that. Bounder did fairly well in the final fight against the Shuffling Har and do does have good utility in case he does get shuffled or in just a regular dungeon. I could have also made the Bounty Hunter just a fourth row, use some stuns, caltrops, whatever have you, but I did decide to put him in the front row and maybe that was incorrect to do so. Other great people for this, as I said, if you have Shieldbreaker or Fledgling DLC, they're both very viable because they can at least move very quickly, or at least attack from a good row, and honestly, the protection piercing abilities from a Shieldbreaker make very quick work of that 162 HP. Hellions are very good, they have overpower, and they can also attack from a magnitude of position, so they're never really out of position. Also, during the regular dungeon, they can do bleed onto creatures or they can also stun the creatures with lower stun resistances. So really a Hellion I think is a great choice and obviously any of the Slayer rings, especially it probably goes Eldritch, Beast, and then Human, those would be great. I don't think you should focus on Unholy because there's only one creature and they die very quickly. So definitely go Eldritch and then Beast if you have those rings or other trinkets lying around, such as I believe the Ethereal Crucifix at some additional Eldritch damage. A very safe way to take down this dungeon but may take a while is to bring in a Vestal Jester combo and then maybe fill in with a Highwayman and someone else, maybe a Hellion or a Leper for the regular dungeon. Lepers, I said, will stay against them but they are very strong. They can get through some of those Cultist Priests in like a hit or two. However, once you get to the Shuffling Heart, I highly don't recommend it. So maybe, like I said, a Highwayman and a Hellion is very good. Hellmasters wouldn't be a bad fourth choice if you want to decide to maybe mix it up and take out a Jester and have the Howlmaster be main stress heals and then you have someone else, so it's just something to consider. But the two things your party really should be able to do is stress heal and physically heal. You do get a campfire which will help with that, but pretty much every enemy in the Darkest Dungeon is going to add stress and also do critical strikes, so you're going to be taking in a lot of stress even if you're really good at the game. A couple of moments of RNG can easily stack 40 to 50 stress on someone and you are going to have to find a way to reduce that significantly before you get to the final fight. Having an affliction is essentially going to ruin you and you don't want that. So definitely prioritize healing and stress healing. If you want to go super safe you can like I said have one individual who specializes in it such as the Jester or you can bring a backup as I did and Crusader or possibly Houndmaster who can still do between a respectable 6 and 8 stress heals. The Occultus obviously always has the issue of possibly getting like a 0 or 5, but if you get decent 10 to 15s, the Occultus should be able to keep you alive. I did get a Death's Door because I got critically strike, struck like 2 times in a row and I just didn't get a good heal. That can happen. However, we didn't lose anyone and this party did very well against the boss. Other trinkets that are really good and provisions bring along plenty of bandages, plenty, plenty and also bleed resistant abilities because they're going to be getting smacked so much and the boss does bleed and the fingers do bleed that you're really going to want to at least save some of that HP and resisting it or at least getting those bandages on right away without running out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this is helpful to you. Like and subscribe below.